Hello, my name is Matt Ricardo and you're about to watch my interview with Eddie Izzard. If you enjoy it and if you want to see more things like it, then just click the logo in the corner of the screen there and subscribe to my channel. But for now, here's Eddie Izzard. So, here I am in Piccadilly and I'm here to have a few words with a man that all 20 odd years ago I used to uh, hang out with and work with every day. Uh, but since then he's gone on to be one of the world's biggest comedy stars. It's going to be fun to catch up with Eddie Izzard. When did you get down the garden? Late 80s, 88. I keep going to just trying to work out everything. I so think, I think we, were, we had about an, a, a like, year crossover. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I left in 89. Yeah. So I was about four years. I remember when you and me and Paddy went over to the South Bank to try and get a new pitch started. Right. And me and Paddy had all our stuff and just started walking off. And you stopped and said, why don't you just get a cab? And at that point, that's, that's the point where you marked yourself out as having ambition. Oh, see, I got that from JJ Waller. What are your memories of being a street performer? Are they, are they, are they fond? The street performing got me Hollywood Bowl. Mm. That's the weird thing, the being able to do in the end after, and I lost all my confidence at Covent Garden. I lost everything. So I was, um, I was pushing at school, 17, 18. I wrote a really rubbishy play at 16, but I was desperately trying to get into stuff. And then I got into some good stuff at school, 17. I made a lot of people laugh when I was about 17, 18. I did something that was quite dramatic, but that couldn't help me at that time. Go to university, immediately trying to do shows. Went to the f first Edinburgh Festival at, at, from Sheffield University, and no one was going to, um, to Edinburgh Festival. So I cut my teeth on that, three years of that organization, making tickets, posting all stuff that you couldn't bring down so I knew how to put stuff on and suddenly it was down to no one really cares that you can put stuff on you've just got to develop this what I think physical situation comedy is what street performing is about I think which if you're doing juggling if you're doing magic you set yourself into scenarios and by talking or even soundlessly even silent you could you can stuff is happening and people go, oh what's gonna happen next and if you just and I, I initially I once tried going out and doing sketches and it was awful because they just nobody cared and I found attention spans adult attention spans become childlike and children's attention spans become animal like, <laughs> like dogs so you have to basically go out and, and threaten physical violence on on things say so get a kid out and say we're gonna kill this kid and goes, yeah yeah and it becomes like Tom and Jerry cartoon violence you're not actually doing mm. violence but you if especially if it's a normal kid they just want you to kill the kid it's it's kind of odd by the end of street performing I had learnt to develop this thing so that you know I could go to America and let's say let's play bigger places let's play arenas push to do that um, and that came from street performing street performing is you know a huge venue mm. that that one the West Piazza is a huge venue and the sky it goes right up to um, run up to some satellite going around the space. It's got a big roof, i.e. no roof. And so uh, learning to develop the confidence to stand there was, was the whole thing. Yeah, I think people talk about charisma as a performer as if it's a kind of innate magical thing, but I think it's a learned skill. And I think street yes. performing is one of the best ways of learning that skill, because you need to be able to get people to look at you and trust you by doing very little, just by having a manner about you. Well, it's interesting. Charisma, I'd say confidence. I'd say street confidence is something learned, because you can have, I think you've got to have a certain amount of confidence before you do the street. Because after yeah. your first gig, you will be rudely awakened to yeah. the fact that they don't care unless you're pretty damn good because that you can't hold the edge. And the only other people who have an edge is, uh, is street vendors as well. They develop that talk about work in the edge, which okay. is interesting. I saw a documentary on this. But yes, um, so charisma, yeah, that builds it. I think I feel charisma is like confidence plus, isn't it? It's confidence. Yeah. It's like some sort of special thing. It's on just taking it to the edge where it's nearly arrogance. But it's not quite yeah, well, that's interesting. Swagger. Yeah, that's um, being a pilot is something 
didn't like that. <laughs> no, because I was scared of flying, so I learned to fly. And I found that to put the plane back down on the ground, you need a confidence bordering arrogance to say, this piece of metal is going to get down. No problems. It has to, it's because it's, it, it's beyond normal. And it's yeah. kind of like, and the, the danger is way less, but on the street, it's only mental danger of performing. But you can, and if you've had this, we've all had this as street force, people just leaving and, you know, and it just being awful shows. Um, my early, I, don't, I don't know if you've had it, I assume you've had it. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember setting up stuff on the East Piazza, uh, singing to myself on a cold, rubbishy day. But I was quite confident at this point, putting out the tea cozies, these animal tea cozies, the duck and the hippo and stuff, singing, there's no business like show business to myself, <laughs> which um, I liked the irony of. And someone came and kicked one of my tea cozies over. It seems that you're incredibly stubborn, that you're one of those people that has to do things on, on your own terms. It doesn't have to be on my own terms. Uh, it's more, I'm, yes, I'm stubborn. I think you have to be tenacious and pushy because the first 10 years, nothing happened. Mm. Um, uh, but I, I'm not sure if I'm doing it on my own terms. I'm trying to do it as much as possible with as much control as possible. Mm. But when I'm doing film work, you know, I'm, you know, I'm doing Valkyrie. I'm in a big film. Here's your lines. Here are the scenes. Get on, do it. Not much heart. You know, I'm not going to be able to say, hey, I don't know, it's just get on and do it. Um, when I was doing the drama show, The Riches, which I did in America, then I was an exec producer, so I had more sway, but still it's a big machine, and so mm. you've got to fit in that. The stand-up will be a machine that I'm ahead of, or, or the front of, so I can say I'd lo like not to do this, but I'd like to do that. I want to play, you know, Europe, so I want to play Berlin, I want to do gigs in French. And then, you know, Romania, Bucharest comes up. Do you want to play there? Yeah, I'll play there. Istanbul, I'd like to play there. So I can choose to add in things. So I, I try and get, you try and get as much control as you can. It's better to fail from your own mistakes than other people's. Ooh, yeah. Is it a conscious thing to try and do some things that haven't been done before? Because the, the current tour has gone to some slightly more far-flung places. Yes, I mean, the, the, there's ways of getting publicity. You could be, if you're new, there is a certain publicity just for being new. Um, you can be uh, someone throwing, you know, throws TVs out windows and that kind of stuff. That will get press, but then that people want more of that, so you've got to keep throwing TVs out the window. Then you never get to watch any TV, because it's always out the window, unless you live outside a window. Um, so I've decided to try and do it by doing things that people haven't done before and playing in America and going to that Hollywood Bowl gig. No one had done a solo stand-up show in Hollywood Bowl, so I suddenly realized this and said, let's do it now, which was cheeky because I'd already played L.A. twice, um, two different times with the same show. This was the third time of the same show, so that was a cheeky thing to do. Madison Square Garden, Kathmandu, met a man from Kathmandu on the streets of New York, and I thought I should go there. It's that uh, simple. Yeah, and he had really good English, and he said, I'm a student. I said, do kids have speak good English in, in Kathmandu? And he said, yeah, enough to. Can I do a gig there? He said, yeah, I think you can. So I said, all right, I'll do a gig in Kathmandu. <laughs> so that's it. Russia, Dylan Moran was playing Russia. Other people have been playing um, the Eastern European cities, Riga, Tallinn. So I started going in there. I wanted to go into the, the Balkans where they had the war, you know, back in the 90s. Um, so, you know, I'm very positive on Europe. Europe has my fingernails show, British, European, and transvestite at the same time. So, yeah, it's good to get out as our country is lurching around careering off into some right-wing place like in the 30s. Yeah, it is, um, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it, it happens when economic crises happen and yeah. people stomp up and down. But, you know, still the majority of people uh, are sensible, but people get worried and then, you know, uh, yeah. any immigrants get demonized and they say that everyone's trying to sign on um, Job Seekers Alliance, which is not true, but it just as soon as somebody says it, then, and right-wing people have an agenda, so. Fear makes people angry. Yeah, at the wrong things. And yeah, and they can be worried about jobs and things and whatever. And then, so this is when you know Hitler rose in the 30s. Mm. So anyway, I'm I'm making a point of that. There's a political thing behind it. I want to go out and you know I'm touring France in French and I want to do Germany in German, Spanish, get Russian. So I've got a lot of things to do. <laughs> so the obvious segue from that is you're going to be mayor, aren't you? 
Well, no, we'll see, you know, because I could get there and not get met, but then I won't, then they say, ah, well, egg on his face, you know, big 10 year run up, <laughs> didn't get it. Uh, and then I'll go f try to be an MP and then I'll try again. But what I don't tend to do is to do things, I, if I fail, I, you know, I came from a lot of failure. So I just try to run marathons in South Africa and fail at that. But I go back again. Hmm. That's the trick. Yeah. Because that, that is the story of my life. Keep going back and back and back and back. And uh, that's Nelson Mandela. I get that off Nelson Mandela. Um, you know, he did a lot of failure before it all worked. So that's the trick. Okay, I think that's all we have the time for. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. Cheers. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please remember to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.